Hello, good morning. Morning. Good Hello, morning. Joe. Hello, Leonie. Lovely Hi. to see you again. And welcome, everybody, to another installment of Conscious Conversations. This is installment number eight. We've been meeting for um, eight sessions. We did have two weeks break just recently. And we're meeting each week to share perspectives, to inspire, to heal and to awaken. So if you've not joined us before, my name's Mike Jenkins and joining me is Joe Scott, nutritionist and kinesiologist, and also Dr. Leonie Morris, energy psychologist and energy medicine practitioner. So we're here at the moment this week on Zoom. It's Wednesday, the 17th of March. So we'll be posting this sometime at the end of this week or next week. So there'll be a slight delay in, in the date. Um, and we're joining together today to talk about self-esteem. And that's something that um, we, we all three feel we have something to offer, a perspective um, to share and to offer. Um, and self-esteem is one of those words that, you know, is, is very um, familiar in our sort of modern world of, you know, psychology. There's lots of books about it. But in, if we look at our own individual experience in life, we can find all of the um, uh, kind of topics, really, and all of the, the, the experience of it um, in our own um, understanding. I'm waffling a bit, but basically what I mean is we all know what it's like to feel not good enough, to feel like, oh, I'm, I'm not really very good at that or I'm not as good as others. Um, and I think that that's a, a universal experience that we all we all have the feeling of not being good enough. So, Leonie, can you can you kick us off and 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 share your perspective? I know you've got a lot to say about it. Yeah, I, I have got a lot to say, but I've probably got a lot to say about too many subjects. But this is one that's really close to my heart because I am a probably a long term sufferer of low self esteem. So, family of five children the youngest and the only female. I was brought up feeling like I didn't belong, like mm. I didn't have a voice, like uh, I was in, uh, basically the wrong sex in the wrong family, totally black sheep of the family. I didn't feel like I was worthy at all. So I, I suffered. I did suffer. It took me a long time. It's why I went and into psychology. It's why I chose to study for so long, because I was fascinated by what motivated us and what, what allowed us to fall into that space of despair because we didn't feel we were good enough. So I have a, a many, many years of study on this subject. And for me, I've come down to an understanding, working with our energy, that self-esteem, self-worth and self-love, they're all very similar. They come from a similar stem. If we love ourselves, um, it's something to do with how we relate to ourselves on the inside. It's to do with our inner energy, how we reflect, how we relate, how we talk to our own inner self, what goes on in here the inner critic or the inner cheerleader, what goes on in our hearts. And the chakra system is an energy system that lots of people have heard of. And we most people know we've got seven starting at our root and going to the crown. But the chakra system is something that stores every single experience, every single um, emotion, every single um, memory in our entire life and actually going on before that. So this amazing storehouse of memories, self-esteem, self-worth are a learned. We aren't born into this world with feeling low self-esteem. Mm. We learn that we're not good enough and we learn that from the outside world. We learn that from our parents, from our siblings, from the kids at school, from what a teacher might have said to us, particularly in the younger years, you know, the one to seven when we're developing. And I believe, uh, this isn't often talked about with the chakras, but for each chakra, there's kind of a fundamental belief and that belief carries a positive charge, a positive energy. And if you hold on to that belief, your energy patterns are buoyant and you feel that self-esteem and that self-worth. And for me at the root chakra, it's I belong and I'm safe. 
so many of us learn that we don't belong. Like I was saying, I didn't feel I belonged. My emotions were out of kilter. I was female, had female desires and needs, and they were quashed and repressed. I didn't belong. The root was out of balance. Mm. The next energy center is your sacral chakra, which is about connecting. It's about being. It's about relating to other people. It's your emotional balance. I got taught that my emotions didn't count and I had to repress them. So the fundamental truth that I trust myself, I love myself and I trust other people. I didn't have that either. Then I went to the solar plexus about your power. This is where your will, your fire to get things done, your goal setting in the outside world. I wasn't allowed to do things because I was a girl. That was wiped out. I have no power to set goals. I can't choose to do my own thing. Undermined heart. Well, I was allowed to be loving, but of other people, not myself. It was crude and, you know, kind of almost blasphemous in our household to love yourself and do things and put yourself first. I came bottom of the list, out of whack. Speaking, your throat chakra. Mm. Was I allowed to share my truth, speak my truth? have a different opinion to someone else no girls with girls were there to look pretty to be seen and not heard ditto the kind of the wisdom the seeing the intuition the imagination and the creation i was born in a world of black and white and science and even being able to share things of an imaginative nature to have flair and flamboyance and to share what was going on in my inner world no <laughs> And I'm sure I hope I'm sharing all of this in detail because all of those energy centers, if they're out of whack from the very beginning, from the root, I'm not safe. I don't connect. I don't belong. I haven't got emotions. I can't share my will. I can't act in the world. I can't deliver. I can't love myself. I have to put everyone else first. I can't speak and I can't share what's going on in my head. I can't um, share my truth. I can't share my vision with the world. Oh my goodness, that is so undermining mm, to your mm. self-esteem. Mm. And if you can relate to any one of those in your childhood as you were growing up, just one of those out of balance is a complete knock to your energy system. And what it does from an energetic point of view is pulls everything in so tightly, you have no space to be yourself. So I want to share some energy tools now that allow you to put all of those different chakras into balance and alignment so you connect to your own wisdom. You connect to your will and your power to deliver in the world. You connect to your voice and your truth and you connect to your self-love. And the first one, I should have said this before I started talking, but literally just hold, I call it encasing or wrapping the thumb Wrapping your thumb in your thumb, and I'm sure Joe will know this, the thumb is, has a lot of very important acu points, particularly in relation to the earth element in Chinese medicine. This is your kind of the mother, the, the kind of the nurturing, the caring, the loving. This is inviting uh, into your energy patterns, the feeling of belonging, the feeling of being nurtured the feeling of being cared for. And I often, if I'm feeling a little bit out of sorts, just holding on to your thumb. And I, you know, I'm wondering that's why infants sometimes grasp their thumbs or suck their thumb. It's incredibly soothing. This is your inner mummy. <laughs> and just holding that, you know, your thumb and taking some deep belly breaths is a really positive way to feel okay, to feel safe, to feel earthed to know that you, you belong and whatever happens unconditionally, no one else can affect your self-esteem and you're always okay. And I, I want to share three, so that's my first one. But the other one is in relation to your spleen. So if you look at your pectorals or breasts, your bra line, if you're a woman and come directly underneath your armpit, it's kind of one, if I put my hand directly into my armpit, it's the next hand down. That is your spleen point. And I like to hold on to my spleen point with one hand, this is my right hand, and connect it to my heart. So I always do my, my kind of three finger and thumb, get those fingerprint notches 
and put that right in the center of your breastplate. And this is connecting your spleen meridian, which is the energy, of, again, of your inner mother. You're channeling your inner mother. So this is about, again, inviting a nurturing energy into your energy patterns and connecting that directly with your heart system. So mother, heart, love, self-love. And I often do this, I call this the, the mashed potatoes, the nurturing dish of comfort food. This is the comfort food of energy medicine. It's so nurturing and soothing to your whole nervous system. It's calming you. It's releasing negative thoughts, negative emotions, reminding you that you're unique, always lovable, unconditionally lovable. You have so much to offer because your energy inside is saying, I'm your mum. To me, you are everything. You're perfect just as you are. Find your passion and follow it. Be who you want to be. And know that everything you do is always a success. You're in the game. You're playing the game. And you're being you. And you're the very best person at just being you. Always perfectly you, aligned, balanced, okay. And just watching you guys on the screen, the energy really starts to spiral in a beautiful, comforting hug. I don't know whether you can feel it. Mm. Your energy systems are, are basically giving you a warm hug. And I hope you guys can feel that at home if you were practicing along. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you so much, Leone. Um, something struck me about um, universal energy as a mother or a father, as a nurturing presence, a nurturing um, reality. Um, and uh, in my mind, just because I've read a lot of self-help books and, you know, that that world of the inner child and the inner, something flipped in my mind and said, yes, it is inside us because the energy, that universal energy of life, that mothering energy is inside of us. Mm -hmm. But actually it's not just on the level of what is sometimes kind of derided as a sort of like 1960s far out kind of, you know, like find your inner child, you know, your inner unicorn and on the marshmallow of rainbow. Mm -hmm. so that's sort of like almost like stuff that people just take the piss out of. Yeah. But actually that, that it's fundamentally, it's this, it's outside of us as well. And that, you know, there is no separation, but also that that energy, that inner mother is also our outer mother the universal mother the mother of our mothers the mother of all mothers you know the mother earth uh, the whole you know and and at the sort of mat the, the further out we go in our kind of uh, you know i suppose understanding of that it encompasses the universal father the universal you know, so that actually eventually it is this source energy which i know you refer to a lot in your work Leonie, and that you work with Joe in kinesiology. It's about marshalling that and allowing that to flow easily through our bodies. I think that's a, hopefully for people watching, because I know there will be some people watching it and be like, oh, mm, yeah, you know, like, you know, wishy washy, you know, new age people, here we go. But actually, this is something that's this reality of that source energy is something that is undeniably here. You know, the, it's the energy that grows the trees, the energy that grows our hair, you know, the energy that that is in everything that, that Buddhists tap into. That's the that it's it's the, the universal. <laughs> and so I just think that's so 
such a wonderful tool. Um, and um, I hope people can remember to do that. I hope I can remember to do something as simple as that, um, when actually what we're doing is we're connecting with that part of ourselves that is completely pristine. That part of ourselves that no matter what we've been through individually in our lives um, remains untouched and, and, and pure, if you like, or open. So with that said, I'd quite like to do just a little guided meditation on the topic of um, allowing ourselves to connect with that part of ourselves, just to guide our focus into the connection with the energy that Leone's connecting us to there, which is just so good to have that clear. I mean, I think the chakra systems are so helpful just as an, uh, you know, um, a chart, if you like, to understand the different elements of ourselves. And it made so much, I was really getting quite moved, quite moved by your description, um, Leone, of the journey that you'd had. Um, because I think that it's something that probably a lot of women um, yeah. can relate to. And it feels particularly relevant at the moment this week in the wake of International Women's Week and the things that are in the news, that actually this is not something that can... I don't think it's something that can be completely solved by government alone. You know, I mean, obviously, nothing can always be solved by government alone, but actually this shift... Um, is, is, is something that that's requires a deeper reflection on who we are and what we are. And I just think your perspective and your own story was just so relevant and helpful to that. I, I think there's lots of people, male and female, who can, exp who can relate to that experience of being shut down. Um, uh, so thank you very much. So we'll, we'll take then just, um, just three or four minutes of this, of this meditation. Um, so if we get ourselves comfortable, however feels right, you don't have to close your eyes, but if you'd like to, if you think it helps, you can. And just for these few moments, we just check in with our body. Just paying attention to the sensation of aliveness in your body. the feeling of sitting on the chair, clothes against your skin. The sounds of the world around you. And notice how accepting the space of this moment is. It doesn't deny any sounds or experience. Everything's free to come and go. Noises and interruptions are allowed. We don't like them, but the space and the sound, the silence completely makes room for them. And just turning our attention towards our thoughts of ourselves. And see if you can make some kind of connection between the complete freedom of this moment that's allowing all existence to come and go sound of my voice, the world around us, the body. There's this complete acceptance for anything 
to happen right now. And see if you can somehow make a connection with the fact that you are also completely allowed to be as you are. That actually, is it possible that you are completely loved no matter what defects you may think you have or whatever deficiencies you may think are there? Is it possible that there is a directly available reality in our own experience that completely accepts us? That says, it's okay, you are loved, all is well. And if you just bring your hands together in prayer pose, the middle of your chest and open your eyes and we look at each other. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely, thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's beautiful, beautiful. Now I've got to try and bring myself <laughs> that was lovely thank you for sharing that and you know thank you to leone for that really you know honest and open sharing i really thank you for that because i think it's uh it's really key and i think that that's what it's key about isn't it about being able to be ourselves and to feel comfortable to share these things because i think the more that people can do that um the better the better it is and I, and I think it, it's about realizing that you know we all have this energy um, and whether some people might think that it's pink and fluffy and whatever that might be but you know you've only really got to think of you know wi-fi and everything that's going on that's an energy you know wires that you can see and devices you can see that you can't necessarily see with people but that energy is still there and it's very powerful and, and I think the thing is is that we know we've all got that within and that that's our own our own energy which we do have the ability to control mm. we do have the ability to work with and to harness it and and I think you know particularly with a lot of what's going on at the moment the connectivity is so much you know over zoom over calls etc and there is often a, a real thing that we can lapse into and I think you know it's perfectly natural which is about comparison and you know competition and you know they're doing so much better than me or you know they're you know they're so much you know more beautiful than me they're fitter than me they're smarter than me and, and that can be a lot of the words that go go through our minds and and it's that kind of programming and it's about realizing that, you know, we are all individuals. It, it, it's not about compare and competition. It's about finding ourselves um, and about realizing that we've got that individuality. You know, in the same way that, you know, certain techniques will work really well for one person, mm. but maybe not so well for another. And, and it's about, I think, being open to discover what is right for you and feeling comfortable with that you you know you don't have to be the same as everyone else you don't have to use the same techniques you don't have to follow the same exercise program you don't have to follow the same diet mm. it's about finding what's very personal and individual for you and um and i think you know when we're working with the energy you know whether it it's 
the way that Leone works, or whether it's the way that you work, Mike, or the way that I work, it's about looking for that balance and harmony um, and feeling that you're in the right place for yourself. Um, and, and for some of us, you know, depending on our upbringing, our education, we've maybe ended up going down a route where we feel we have to conform within an area that doesn't feel comfortable. We maybe do, you know, often compare ourselves and feel like, I'm not that good at this. And I suppose it's, it, it's about realizing that actually we can look within ourselves to find out what is really right for us, what really resonates for us. Um, and maybe it's taking that time to sit down and to think about and maybe make a note of what we feel are our strengths. Mm. What do we feel that we are good at? What do we really enjoy? What brings us joy? Mm. And to think about how we can spend more time doing those things rather than trying to conform or fit in with maybe what we think we should be doing <laughs> or where we're you know comparing and competing and it's really interesting because you know in kinesiology um i think i spoke in a, a previous uh, conversations about you know if you test a muscle and it tests strong you can then hold a mobile phone up by your ear and that muscle will give way completely because that is interfering with our energy circuit it's breaking that energy circuit and in the same way as something like that can interfere in the same way that maybe a food we eat that we have a sensitive sensitivity to can upset our balance in the same way our thoughts can do exactly the same mm. so if i ask someone if i tested their muscle it tested strong if i ask them to think about something that they love Think about something that they love, something they really enjoy. And I'll test that muscle and the muscle will stay strong. If I then ask them to think about something that either makes them sad or unhappy, something that they don't enjoy, that muscle will give way. Mm. So it's not only the physical things around us, it's actually our thoughts mm. and the way that we think that can affect our balance of our energies. So. I, I always think that we should sort of discover for ourselves, think, think about our strengths, think about how we could play to those strengths. Maybe think about things that we really enjoy doing, but we're not doing at the moment. Um, maybe we used to do something that really made us feel good, but we've stopped doing it. Mm. Why do we stop doing? Maybe we need to go back to that. Um, and, you know, it, it's interesting when, you know, work with people, often people will say to me, I want... I want to be, I want to be loved. I want to be happy and I can test and that muscle is so strong. If I then say to them to say the words, I deserve to be happy and I can test that, sometimes that muscle will give away straight away mm -hmm. because that self-belief, that self-esteem makes them think they don't actually deserve it. And so it, it's often about doing more work around realizing yeah we want to be happy we want to be loved and we need to explore why we think we don't deserve it mm. what is that barrier because we all deserve to have the things that we we want we need to find ways that we can work with that and i think it's often things that we need to look at around balancing our energies it can be sometimes, you know, we, we need to see someone for counselling, whatever it may be. We may just need to chat to someone mm. just so that we can actually realise that there's a lot of good things about us, but it's so easy to think about the things that we aren't mm -hmm. or the things that, you know, we should be and we aren't. But it, it's about realising what we have within, not just that energy, but all that we have within, um, and actually what we can achieve so yeah. that's my kind of you you triggered a thought for me there joe because yeah. everything you've said i completely relate to you know the voices in our head are, are so powerful and you know 95 percent of the time we're on autopilot which means we're not conscious of mm. all of those learned things so my learned beliefs mm. were you know multi-layered and those beliefs were constantly battering me down and depleting my energy and taking away self-esteem and self-love. 
It's so important. But from an energy psychology perspective, the one biggest thing that people come to me to shift is I don't love myself. I don't deserve to be loved or to be happy is shifting that one belief. So I actually use um, EFT, um, emotional freedom tapping, tapping to release those mm. negative beliefs to get you into that good place. It's mm. too long a process to share on here, but yeah. then know more about it. Maybe we can we can do something on that yeah. at a later point. It was it's, interesting because I jot, jotted a note down to say about EFT, yeah. but I like you, you know that that's too long a process. But actually, maybe maybe another week. We should do it. We could actually do it and and show how it works because yeah. that's the great thing I love about it is that it's something that people can take away from a session and they can practice for themselves as many times a day as they like. Yeah. Um, and it it's really powerful in getting rid of those ingrained programs that we have. Mm. and almost having a fresh program isn't it so absolutely but incredibly powerful yeah, yeah. And, and now proven so a lot of people kind of poo poo it as, as we've always said it's seen as you know a too fringe too out there too woo woo but there's a lot of scientific record now that proves a it works and b it's incredibly quick yeah. to yes, can... long-seated unconscious mm. yeah. beliefs incredibly... and again it's you know it, it's one of those great tools that you can share with someone and they've got it in their toolbox for life then haven't they so definitely it's also um i mean what i would say to those people who say you know this stuff doesn't work um is first of all have you tried it (laughs) and you apply it and see what results you get but also it stands to read i mean an emotional freedom technique and the tapping i think it does um it embeds those sort of changes in thinking patterns a lot quicker i've experienced it myself but just the other way, looking at it the other way around, you know, it's taken us years to develop those negative self images, those thoughts, you know, that I don't deserve this, I'm not good enough, all, all the opposite, you know, well, I deserve everything, you know, why wouldn't I have everything, I can have what I want, they can't stop me, you know, that can be out of balance as well. Um, and, you know, that might Get, might take us 25 35 45 years of thinking the same thoughts over and over again every day several hundred times a day you know it might take 30 years of that for that to be locked in as a completely un- underlying belief you know or unconscious mm. underlying belief and so I think it's worth saying that to those people is that well that's how it works in the first place it starts that way you know? and to unpick it you know kind of you know to change it you know we we, we do have to we have to do a bit of work on it and I think that the good thing I think that that um I like about our sharing is that we don't have to do this stuff on our own you know um there are people out there who who can act as a guide or a mentor yeah. or a companion in this kind of work you know um so the work that Joe does is is really about kind of companionship and and being with you through a journey of behavior change, emotional, physical, on every level, you know, food, nutrition, and all of it. Similarly, the work that you do, Leone, you know, it's mm-hmm. about positive behavior change. And sometimes it's about um, addressing trauma, you yeah. know, which some people, you know, which are, for some people, it's just really not possible to do that on your own. You need, and like you say, Joe, sometimes it requires a specific intervention. Yeah. Um, I just think these things are so helpful. Um, I, I love talking about them with you both. Um, and we could go on forever <laughs> talking about these things. Um, but they're so helpful. Um, and I love your um, suggestions, Joe. Um, and I think that actually you often find that when people have spent a time um, it, maybe on silent retreat or they have, you know, they, they've done something different that's healthy and, and good for themselves, you often find people coming away from those things and going, do you know what, after, you know, 20 years of not doing it, I joined a netball team and I, I, I did what I loved at school, you know, or, you know, um, I've always loved, um, you know, trees and now I'm doing more with them. Whatever our passions are, you know, I think it's really important to sort of, and just the last thing I'll say, and then perhaps we'll wrap up is that 
Of course, we live in a society, in our culture, the culture that we're all in in the West, that emphasizes deficiencies. It emphasizes lack because our economy, it work, you know, it runs on that. You, you know, you don't have enough of this. You need more of this. You know, um, buy this car and you'll be, you know, attractive to women. <laughs> it's all that those <laughs> subliminal advertising messages, yeah. but also our entire economy is based on the fiction that you are not enough. That yeah. there's something yeah. fundamental missing, mm -hmm. and so we'll just by sleight of hand imply that all these things that we think you need are probably what's missing when we know actually you know you can have as many consumer goods as you possibly like and it doesn't really solve very much in it but they're useful you know some of them are useful utilitarian things but so i think also we we're up against it a bit with our our culture for the past how many hundreds hundreds of years that um that we're actually almost encouraged to focus on our deficiencies, focus on where we're not good enough, you know, focus on improving ourselves rather than looking for, like you say, Joe, well, what's what's already okay? What am I already what am I already good at? What am I, you know, and, and does it matter if I'm not the same as them? <laughs> lovely. Exactly. Yeah, brilliant. It's so lovely to see you both again after our two week. Yeah, it's good. Miss, missed it. Miss missed it. doing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great to see you both. Um, and perhaps um, Leonie and I were emailing and chatting the other day about the um, potential of maybe doing some kind of more structured event um, with with guests, you know, yeah. and, and invited guests, you know, to maybe do some kind of webinar or something that could hopefully eventually happen in, you know, in the 3D world when things open up. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, we'll have to, we'll have yeah. to get together. Well, I was really hoping that people can shout in with what you know what they'd most love to hear and see and learn what techniques would yeah. really help them what are they missing it what are their things they think they're scarce in their world <laughs> and we can Definitely. plug that scarcity. it would be good i'd like to do that as sort of you know a webinar you know if there's interest yeah. well, let's interest. Explore, explore that further that would be good great lovely to see you have a good day yeah have a good day everyone. lots of love yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye, bye.